Hey, hello, John Smith, Book Kahuna coming at you with today's publishing tip for the day. Today's not actually a publishing tip. Well, it's a story. So, actually, it could be written and be a publishing tip because it could be put into content with that then can be disseminated any way I want, but, and it will be as a blog post. But, just wanted to run this by you. If you are into sports in any way, shape, or form, and you've always dreamed of being at an event like Game 7 of the World Series or the Super Bowl, you know, that's, that's great. But you know what? Those events come along every year. Maybe not Game 7 of the World Series because it may, may go less games. But, you know, the Super Bowl is every year. Now, I've always been intrigued by trying to be at a historical sporting event. And this goes back a long time ago. When I was first a Yankee fan, um, I was in college. I went to a small state school up in Potsdam, New York, SUNY Potsdam. And my girlfriend at the time lived in Chappaqua. Uh, you may know Chappaqua. It's where the Clintons live now. It's kind of an affluent area. and. We were home for summer, and I decided that I wanted to go to the Yankee game on July 4th because, number one, at the, you know, George Steinbrenner, the late George Steinbrenner, that was his birthday, and the Yankees had proposed that they were going to have a barbecue and picnic after the game. I thought this would be great. Me and my girlfriend, we just go to the game, we hang out, we go to the picnic, we have a nice time, we get to see the Yankees play the Red Sox, they'll play the Red Sox that day. And my girlfriend didn't want to because she was a Mets fan. So she decided, why don't you come up and come to the lake and we'll have a picnic and a barbecue and we'll just do that and everything will be fine. Now, being the good boyfriend that I am, or was, I said, yes dear, let's do that. Let's, let's go up to the lake and, and do exactly what you want to do. So we did that. And as we're getting ready to leave the picnic area and go back to the car, we get in the car, I turn on the radio, and the announcer on the radio is screaming, it's the first time in New York Yankee history in 36 years that this has happened. Yes, it was the day that Dave Rigetti threw a no-hitter against the Red Sox. And, of course, I was not there. Going forward into the future. Took my niece to opening day. She was six years old. It was very cold. She was wearing a snowsuit. And we went to opening day, fourth inning, it starts to snow. Now, when you're at a game with a six-year-old, she kind of eyeballed the cotton candy guy and that was her whole attention for most of the game where's the cotton candy man where, where is the cotton candy man I want the cotton candy man get her a cotton candy I ask her how the game's going good when can we go <laughs> sixth inning anyway because of the fact that we sat there in the snowstorm from the fourth inning on the Yankee announcer, Bob Shepard, came on and said, you know, Yankee fans are the best fans in the world, and we're going to give you the opportunity to go to another game because you're sitting here in the snow. Wow. The people that I went to the game with, the a workmate of mine at the time at McGraw-Hill, we decided that we're going to go see Seattle. And that was one of the games that was, was offered. So her husband worked at the... Um, bus terminal across from Yankee Stadium. He, he turned in the tickets, got our new tickets. Unfortunately, that game was going to be on a Tuesday night. Tuesday night. And I said, ah, you know, I live on Long Island, going up to the Bronx, coming back. Yeah, I don't think so. So I told the woman I worked with that she could have my two tickets and just go and have a good time. And it turned out that that was Dwight Gooden's no-hitter that night against Seattle. Now, that's two games, no history for Don. Fast forward again. 1999. I'm looking for a new job. Start interviewing with a company. 
working in Manhattan, still at Random House. Things aren't going that great. We had just been purchased by Bertelsmann. Didn't know what was going to happen with that. I was in a small, uh, small part of the company, and get get into this interview, and then they say, "You know, we'd like to fly you out." Now this job was going to be in Colorado, where I am now. So they flew me out for an interview on a weekend, and normally I would go to Old Timers Day every year. I would go to Old Timers Day. This year, I was on a job interview. I get finished on Saturday running around seeing what Colorado is all about. Turn on the TV. David Cohn pitched a perfect game on Old Timers Day. And I wasn't there. Now, what is this all leading to? Two weeks ago, I had to go back to New York to start the process of selling my mother's house. And one of my buddies from Toastmaster, John Nelson, he was also back in New York working. And I said, hey, look, you know, why don't we uh, hit a game? Why don't we try and hit a game? Whenever I go back to New York, I always try and hit a game, even if I'm only there for a week. So we got tickets to the Friday night game. And lucky for us, we got to see Alex Rodriguez hit his 3,000th hit. We were there in the stands. I have a great picture of Rodriguez in his follow-through after he hit the home run. I was actually there. Now, to put that in perspective, you've got the World Series, you've got Super Bowl, you've got no hitters, you've got perfect games. Perfect games is close, though. Only 29 people now, 29 men, have gotten 3,000 hits. And I was in the stadium for one of them. What does this mean? Persistence. Persistence and a will and the ability and the, the fact that you want to be there one time to see history made. History made. You can do it. You can do it in your business and make history with your business. You can do it in your, your personal life. You can do it. Just be persistent and have a passion for what you do. I love baseball. I wanted to see something like that happen once in my lifetime. Now everything is gravy. I have all the stories about the things that didn't work out, but now I have the one thing that did work out, and I have the ticket stub to prove it, and I have pictures. I was there. No matter what you want to say about A-Rod with the PEDs or the steroids or whatever, you still have to hit the ball. And 3,000 hits, no matter what, is a great accomplishment. And, and somebody who was there in the stadium, that's big. Don Schmidt, the Book of Huna, congratulations, A-Rod. I was there. I, I have the ticket stuff to prove it. I'm going to put it in my blog post. I'm going to put a picture of it. Bye-bye.